All right, this is what we're working with here. This is a, a full Mega Squirt 2 version 3.57 uh, wired kit from Godzilla Raceworks. So this uh, basically comes ready to go, plug in and play. Um, we'll start by the most noticeable thing here, the harness. Um, this is a full harness for the 280ZX, uh, including a relay box uh, for accessories and such. And as you can see, uh, each plug is already soldered in place and basically just ready to go. Um, to my left here we have a, a wideband O2 sensor system. Uh, it's a glow shift model. This is optional with the package. Of course, stickers, uh, communication, uh, I forget what this is called. It's just basically a communi you can communicate the ECU from your computer. And uh, some other various stuff. We got some sensors, um, you know, uh, some other hardware here, you know, relays, uh, grommets, that sort of thing. Uh, some more cables here and there for transferring data, and of course, the ECU itself. Now, in my case, this actually seems to be a bit smaller than the factory 280ZX ECU, so I don't think I'm going to have any issue uh, putting it in the uh, stock location, which is definitely what I want to do. Another thing, uh, with each order from Godzilla Raceworks, uh, with your Mega Square Kit, you'll get a, a PDF file of uh, some really uh, detailed instructions. Actually, it's even got you know pictures of the parts being installed on a 280ZX itself. Um, it's about 57, 58 pages long, and it tells you step by step exactly how to do it um, in proper way. So obviously, it doesn't come with a booklet like this. I printed this off my computer, um, but yeah, this is definitely a nice uh, thing to have, uh, especially when you're dealing with custom stuff. So obviously, uh, the first step in the process was to remove the entire factory EFI harness and ECU. Uh, it wasn't all that difficult, but it was time consuming. Um, the factory harness is tucked in a way where a lot of engine bay accessories had to be removed in order to gain access, like a lot of heat shields, a uh, washer tank, uh, you'll see later the uh, hood latch, uh, stuff like that. But uh, once that was done, I could simply disconnect the harness connectors from the EFI components like the injectors, idle air control, TPS, etc., etc. And then all I had to do was remove the uh, harness itself from the plastic clips that were holding it to the body. everyone. Well, it is uh, day two of the uh, Mega Squirt conversion on the 280ZX, but I'll kind of go over with you guys uh, what uh, we've done uh, in general. Um, so basically, the biggest thing is we separated the entire uh, fuel injection harness from the manifold. Got some panels removed here, uh, exposing the ECU, um, as well as we've got access to underneath the storage compartment. Not exactly sure why yet, but I'm just going by the instructions. And now basically uh, we're just going to continue uh, with disassembling and removing all of the factory EFI. Uh, 
what a behemoth this thing is. As you can see, this huge loom has to squeeze through that tiny hole. All right, with a good amount of wiggling and prying and persuasion, I've got the, I've got, you can't really see it because it won't focus in here, but I got the grommet pulled out. Now I think I'm gonna uh, give it a go at uh, pulling the whole harness out. never seen the light of day before. And all I gotta do is fish the other part of the harness out from that side and then uh, she'll be totally free. Might not be able to do it with my hands though. Oh, actually, I'll just put that there. <laughs> okay, separate some stuff here. It's definitely going to take a bit of fishing to get all this out, but it uh, should be fine. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention is uh, actually I had to remove this insert here from the fusible link box in order to free everything else. Um, it's definitely very tricky to uh, kind of notice, um, but that does have to be done. Um, it's either that or fishing through the firewall into the body harness to get all this stuff done, with, to get all this stuff disconnected, which is just unnecessary. But now, I mean, we're officially free on the passenger side of the engine bay, and I think now we're going to take the whole damn thing out. Ancient EFI is coming out of the car. Okay, that is it. Wait, what was that? Oh, screwdriver. She's all out. Everything is free, nothing's plugged in. And uh, now we can kind of compare side by side here. We have the uh, ECUs and such and all the other harnesses. And yeah, I mean, you can just tell that, I mean, stuff wasn't looking too good. I'm sure the inside of the harness is infected with rust, or not rust, but corrosion. Um, obviously these connectors here are new when I got the injectors replaced, so those are going to look good, but everything else is pretty ratty and pretty rusty, aside from the stuff that's on the inside. Luckily this is all perfectly clean here. But um, now we can get real serious and start wiring up um, the new system. So the next thing we're going to do is uh, work on uh, routing the new harness uh, into the car. Um, one of the first things uh, that we got to do is remove uh, the seat so we can have access to a grounding point underneath it. Um, and then we're going to have to remove these trim panels um, just so we can route some wiring along the inside here and then back into the fuel pump. So removing a seat on an early Z car is extremely easy. Two bolts in the back and then two bolts right here in the front one on each side and it literally just comes right out. Alright, driver's side seat is out. Now I can take a look at all the interesting things under here. Alright, so of course we got uh, some interesting stains. We got a key. This actually looks like it goes to the door. Put that aside and we got it. Oh, no, no. Cannot, cannot show that. Cannot advertise any weapon manufacturers on YouTube or else you will get fucking banned and that's it. But uh, yeah, uh, other than that, uh, a couple dead moths, some change, and uh, a little bit of, a little bit of gravel. It's not too bad, not too scary.
All right, so here's the deal. This all kind of has to come off in relatively one piece, which required the removal of these two plastic clips here. Now, if you're doing this, um, in order to remove these safely, you're definitely gonna need one of these interior pop rivet tools or else you will destroy these things. And luckily we only have a slight bit of carnage here. Not too bad. Um, and then what we have to do, I already loosened it up, is the, uh, the coat hanger up here. And it looks like we're gonna have to remove the uh, seat belt buckle mount down here and then this all will kind of come out as one. All right, we should be good to go. Got the buckle out of the way, got the coat hanger off. Now let's slowly kind of massage this out of place here. Of course, I'm gonna be very careful. This is ancient plastic. Okay, cool. So now I'm gonna be uh, looping all of the wiring through the firewall. I'm getting kind of everything laid out and in position to be hooked up. Um, we do have to take or had to take this uh, connector apart. If you remember, there was a couple of halves on each side um, to kind of screw into the EC like you would uh, have on an HDMI cable on like a computer or a TV. Uh, that had to be removed in order to fit through the hole. Um, but uh, once that's through, we're gonna have to uh, kind of caress through these other looms through. And then we'll have all the interior stuff squared away. Um, and then we can uh, start hooking stuff up. snake through just fine and now obviously this goes to the fuel pump um, we have a ground here this taps into the uh, 12 volt signal to the uh, ignition switch and this I forget okay so I've got the fuel pump power tapped into the key on position and I have the fuel pump line as well as the fuel pump ground routed all along here. Pretty crafty how this works. So up here there's a, a spare, just a lone Phillips connector just sitting up here. Uh, sorry, Phillips screw that's just sitting up here where you attach this uh, 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 wire mount, I guess. And then you run it all the way back here into the fuel pump connector. So it's pretty stealth. All right, so basically all of the uh, wiring and such is in place, uh, practically ready to plug in. However, we do need to install some hardware for the system to plug into. So uh, the main components I have here, I have the uh, Palnet fuel rail, which actually has been sitting on my shelf for almost three years, as well as these uh, OEM 280ZX turbo fuel injectors, which I believe are 268cc. Um, I got the turbo automatic oil pump, which has a little bit more volume, and of course, the uh, turbo distributor and shaft that will be going into the engine. So, um, basically, I'm going to start off with the fuel rail and uh, plumbing the new fuel system. I have a bunch of uh, fuel line here that I'll be bending in place um, for the return system since I really don't want to run a bunch of friggin' hose uh, because that's just not safe in terms of just heat and everything. Um, so I'm going to start mocking all that up, but first thing I have to do is remove uh, the factory fuel rail. 